Danny Crisp here, 2019's Instructor of the Year here at Prime, and I'm reaching out to let you know I've created 10 quick episodes to help you become a professional driver, or if you've already got your CDL, to help you with some of the day-to-day -day operations. Now, these videos cover a wide variety of content, not just CDL prep, but also things that are gonna help you in that OTR phase of your drive. Now, I'm really excited to be releasing these videos as kind of a compendium to my current students, my previous students, but also hopefully future students as well to give them the resources they need to get the most out of their drive, the most out of that CDL, and to better their best. So hopefully this is gonna be meaningful content that's gonna to help to accelerate your knowledge base and get you out on the road to success sooner. You know, do yourself a huge favor, make the call to Prime, find your path. Do you wanna change your life? Do you wanna be your best, tired of having all that strive, now's the time to reinvest, pick up the phone and make a call, it's your time to give your odds, change your life, you know you can, sing it out loud, CDL, yeah my man, CDL, all right dude, CDL, now's the time, CDL, yeah go call Prime, CDL, oh yeah, CDL, make the move, CDL, no time to wait, get on up, let's move. So great. Okay, one quick thing about Prime's referral program before we get started. Now, Prime is such an amazing company at rewarding hard work. It's truly incredible the way that Mr. Lowe and the whole team share the success of this company from the top to the bottom in every phase. And one way that they do that is through the referral program. Every incoming driver is given an amazing opportunity to share in the potential wealth of their new career with a current driver for Prime at no personal cost to themselves. All they have to do is tell their recruiter the name and the driver code of a current driver for Prime. Now, if you already know a driver for Prime, please make 100% certain that you get their name and their driver code in. It is vital to the business model here to reward excellence and share in the success. In that regard, if you don't have a current friend or relative that's driving for Prime, for every new applicant that uses my code, I will personally donate $100 to Springfield's local food banks. They say that $1 equals four meals, so you'd be contributing 400 meals to Springfield's local families. That's pretty incredible. Remember, we're all in this together. Make sure to message me directly that you've used my code. That way I can track it and get that donation in. You can connect with me at any time on the information here on this YouTube page or through my Instagram. Now, let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Okay, that last episode we focused on truck stop parking, and we were gonna jump right into the two rules of flatbed, but instead let's focus on one of the most important lessons for a young driver, and that is how do I maintain a healthy lifestyle over the road? Now drive endurance is made up of many factors, and it's something we need to be thinking about not just in terms of days and weeks, but months and years if you're gonna make a career out of running freight. Now, we get paid by the mile, not by the minute out here, so we have got to keep those tires rolling, and the way that we do that is by building up our drive endurance. Drive endurance is about overall health, not just about your weight and appearance, but by focusing on these factors, we end up staying more fit overall. Those factors include diet, exercise, as well as mental health, establishing a strong support system, developing hobbies that can keep us mentally active over the road, as well as many other factors. We'll be getting into those a little bit more in future episodes. So let's dive right in. When it comes to our drive endurance, the first thing I wanna talk about is our diet, AKA what is the fuel that we're putting in our body? That's gonna make a big difference in how we perform. What we put in is what we get out. So let's talk about some basic concepts of how to protect ourselves and be more fuel oriented in our focus. Okay, so when it comes to our diet, there's a few things we need to think about. First off, in an overarching sense, is we need to have a plan. We need to prepare ourselves. The first thing is, keep your guard up. Now, there's gonna be times where you've been driving for 10 and a half hours, you are tired, you are hungry, you are very susceptible to making bad food choices. You walk into that truck stop, you smell that Cinnabon, you smell that pizza, and all of a sudden you've made a bad food choice. So, a way to protect yourself from that or keep your guard up is keep some raw mixed nuts on the truck. That's something that I do personally, and before I walk in, eat a couple handfuls of that, drink a little bit of water, give yourself a minute or two to get a little full, so when you walk in, you are less likely to make one of those bad food choices. So keep your guard up. 
Second thing we want to talk about is keep the fires hot. And it's the same concept. What we're talking about here is if I'm in a constant state of being a little full, I am less likely to get cravy. It's when we get cravy that we start thinking about salt, we start thinking about sugar, and we start leaving ourselves in a position to make bad food choices. So again, always be a little bit full, always be kind of grazing as they say, a lot of small meals that keeps you in a better position to keep your metabolism hot, fired up, and overall for the entire day, that's going to keep your body burning calories. So keep the fires hot. That third thing we want to talk about is keep the fridge full. This is pretty obvious. I've had a lot of previous students that come to me and say, during that TNT phase, during that training over the road phase, maybe my instructor didn't have a fridge on the truck. And so we ended up stopping a lot and eating a lot at diners, eating heavier food because that's what was available to us. If you keep the fridge full, what you're going to be doing is putting yourself in a position to make good choices. And even further, meal prep. Make those meals throughout the week so that way when you do get hungry, you have something that's heart healthy, that's already been made, you know the ingredients, uh, it puts you in a position to be much more conscientious about what you're eating. And we're out here to make money. It's going to save us money to buy lots of ingredients in bulk and be making these meals throughout the week as we go instead of spending $20, $25 at a diner. So always want to think about have a plan. Always want to think about keep your guard up, keep the fires hot, and keep the fridge full. So let's talk a little bit about what we can and can't eat when we're trying to decide how to keep the fridge full. Okay, so everyone's a little different with what they like to eat and how they like to eat it. Just keep in mind as we consume certain things, how it's affecting our body. This is a list of some ingredients I like to tell folks to potentially be a little bit more mindful how they're consuming stuff because this can be problematic over time. So first things first, broken grains. This is gonna be stuff like pastas, cereals, anything that might have empty calories that aren't really gonna help us nutrition wise. Second thing, oil. This is often found in chips. Hydrogenated oils can be problematic for us over time, so be aware of that. Uh, animal products. Uh, a lot of people like eating animal products. There's nothing wrong with that, but to a certain degree, we want to be mindful of how much we're consuming because that can be difficult on our body over time. Alcohol. Obviously, guys, as operators, we need to be very conscientious with how we're consuming alcohol, if at all. Remember, we have to be thinking about tomorrow, the next day, the next week, the next year. Uh, we need to be very mindful with how we're consuming that. Typically, the best choice is to wait, if at all, to consume it for your 34-hour reset. Um, and then finally, sugar. Obviously, that's going to have a pretty negative effect on our body. Uh, it's going to pack on the pounds pretty quick. Um, as we're thinking about all this stuff, what we're really thinking about is we got to remember this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. We need to be conscientious with how we're fueling ourselves. So speaking in terms of marathon, not a sprint, um, let's move into talking a little bit more about not just diet and having a plan, but also exercise and how we can engage physically to keep the fires hot in a totally different way. Um, let's head out in the field and see if we got anyone to talk to about that. Hi, I'm Andrea Mueller, also known as Active Life of Ann on Instagram. I used to work at Prime for over 10 years and Danny asked me to share a few of my fitness tips. I didn't start my fitness journey until 2016, and that was almost two years after I had twin boys and gained and lost over 70 pounds. So I hope these are helpful, and uh, here we go. Tip number one, create a small goal. When I started my fitness journey, I had never consistently worked out before, so I was kind of overwhelmed by the whole concept, but I found a program doing three days a week, 28 minute workouts, and that's all I did. Once I built that habit for three to four weeks and I started feeling confident and convinced myself that I did actually like showing up and I felt better after the workout, then it was easier to add on to that. But for me, I just started small and went from there. Now I work out five to six days a week, um, but I still don't typically work out more than 30 minutes at a time, but it's gonna be dependent on you and what your goals are. But to get started, maybe it's 10 minutes of walking three days a week, whatever it is, create that goal, build that habit, and then build on from there. Tip number two, find an accountability partner. When you're first getting started with your fitness journey, you're gonna have several days or like a month that you wanna just quit <laughs> and give up um, because it is kind of hard to build those habits. But by telling someone else, maybe it's just you have an Instagram account, tell people on your stories, hey, I'm starting this and I'm committing to 30 days of X or 
a friend or another truck driver or Danny, comment below and he can be your accountability partner. Doesn't really matter. Find someone though that's gonna hold you accountable. Just by saying it out loud, you're also going to really seal the deal and follow through with it more than if you just mentally are like, yeah, I'm gonna do this. And then stuff gets hard and you give up. Um, for me, I started with my two sisters. I'm one of five kids. And I started with my sister, Ashley and Amanda. We're all moms and um, it was fun to do it together. But that the first couple of weeks, we kept texting each other and being like, this sucks. <laughs> but kept showing up and then here we are like six years later, we're all still active and we do not regret starting. We regret not starting sooner. Tip number three, use what you have where you are. It doesn't have to be complicated to get started. All you need are some simple bands. You can use body weight or you can use some free weights. I started with very little and to this day, I've, I have very little equipment. I do go to a gym sometimes, but I know when you're out on the road, it's hard to get access to a gym. And sometimes you're in places where it's not easy to go for a walk. So I'm gonna show you some simple exercises that you can do with bands. Bands are super lightweight, they're very cheap and easy to keep on the truck. So here's just a few ways I use them. Um, you can put the band underneath your foot and use it to do a bicep curl. And then you can also do an overhead press. And then if you don't have somewhere to anchor it, you can just grab like a tree, a little tree hugger move here. And you can do several uh, simple moves to work the back as well. Those are just some ways I use the bands, but you can find a ton more online just by searching for banded workouts. I hope those tips were helpful. If you have any tips yourself, be sure to comment those below. If you want to find me online, you can find me at Active Life of Anne on Instagram. Safe travels. Okay, thanks so much, Andrew. Those are some great pointers. Now let's go back over those and also add a couple more. Now that first one she talked about was small goals. Absolutely, it's so important that we set ourselves some targets, some benchmarks of where we're trying to get to. But just remember with that, give yourself a little bit of grace in case you don't always hit those targets to stay on this journey. Now. Second thing she talked about here is this accountability partner. Absolutely, it's important to win on this journey to have a reference point, someone that you can have as kind of a teammate along the way. So whether that's a sibling, a best friend, a spouse, even me, find someone who can kind of keep you on the path that you're trying to stay on. Next thing she talked about is use what you have where you are. She showed us some great banded exercises. If that's something that you like, that's a good way to engage. Um, other equipment you can take on the truck, free weights, a bicycle, whatever it is you like to use, if you have that with you, you're gonna be much more likely to be active. So think about bringing whatever it is you like along with you. Some additional pointers are apps, maps, and how to engage locally. There's a lot of apps we can use to engage in exercises, different routines, things like that. Maybe find something that you like there. Or you can use satellite image maps or maps like Trail Forks that are gonna give you ideas of local hikes, local trails that you can use. Um, it's just important to think about how we can engage locally wherever we are. We're always in a new city. We have an opportunity to explore that surrounding, which brings me to this next point. This is a big adventure. There's gonna be times where you can go out to the beach one day or go hiking in the mountains or see some cool desert stuff. There's a lot of ways we can engage in this big never ending road trip as a big adventure. So try and see it that way and it's gonna be a lot easier to stay active. Uh, and then finally, I always tell folks, get yourself a membership to one of these national gyms. It's gonna give you an opportunity to have local amenities, have a shower, but also engage in some of that equipment that you might not have with you on the truck that's gonna keep you active. So uh, these are some basic pointers that I like to advocate uh, people use. Uh, let's take a look at those on the next page here. Okay, so some great pointers there on how to stay active over the road. And one of the main themes here is equipment. Now as a flatbedder, I happen to have a lot of equipment on the back of that truck. And over the years, I've integrated that equipment to do some different workout routines. So why don't we head out to the field and get a look at what I call the Sunday 7. All right, very excited to finally be getting out here for this Sunday 7. Now, these seven exercises have always treated me really well. It's a great way to incorporate the equipment that's on the truck, but there's a lot of different ways you can incorporate this flatbed equipment. But if you are not a flatbedder, that's no problem. There's a lot of different ways you can get involved in exercises. We can be doing push-ups, we can be doing pull-ups, walking, running, bicycling. There's a lot of different ways you can get active and get that metabolism going. But if you are a flatbedder, these are some great exercises you can incorporate the equipment with. So let's just jump right in. 
All right, so this first exercise is gonna be incline sit-ups. Now what I've done is I've taken a strap and two tarps and created an incline bench. This is something that you can do very simply with the equipment on the truck, and this can be used also with incline bench press, other exercises as well. So let's jump right into some incline abs. Okay, so as we talked about here, we have our two different tarps we've laid perpendicular over each other and thrown that strap over the top. It's a real easy way to create that incline bench. Joe's gonna show us some simple exercises here we can do uh, with this decline position from the incline bench that get our abs worked out pretty well. Um, obviously, you can do as many of these as you'd like, and then over time, if you want, you can add some weight that's gonna create even more resistance. Um, this has always been one of my favorite ways to kind of integrate different workouts. So. Uh, there we have our uh, beginning exercise, working that core. Okay, great exercise there. Got the abs working, kind of start the fires a little bit. Now the second exercise, we're gonna do shoulder extensions. We're gonna use our chains and integrate two different exercises to work two different muscle groups of those shoulders. So let's jump right into that. All right, so this next exercise, real simple, is gonna be that shoulder extension. Couple different ways we can do it. What's nice about these chains is as you begin, begin getting stronger, you can kind of bunch up more of it in your hands and it's gonna inherently create more of a resistance. So uh, this first exercise, real easy, this kind of up and out. And we can do three sets of 15, no big deal. And then forward as well is a good way to get the front of that shoulder worked out a little bit. Two easy exercises we can use with our chains uh, to get our shoulders worked out. Great couple exercises there, getting our shoulders engaged. Now, let's move on to getting our biceps involved in this. We can use some curls using that pry bar and just wrapping that chain around it in such a way that it'll create some resistance. Now, obviously, the more chain you add to it, the more resistance. So you can kind of build over time and eventually even add two chains. Kind of depends on what you want to do. But let's take a look at that. Okay, great. So this next exercise is going to be your basic bicep curl, but we're going to use the pry bar and that chain like we talked about. So Joe, if you don't mind grabbing that thing for us and exhibiting some basic curls here. Now the chain will move around a little bit, so you kind of want to lay it in a way that it's not going to fall off a little bit, but you know, you're going to still get that resistance. And again, as you become stronger, you can add more, you can add that second chain that we talked about here, um, but a very simple bicep curl to kind of get the front of our arms worked in. Okay, so great exercise there, working our biceps. Now let's jump back into our shoulders a little bit using that same bar and chain that we just created and do some of these lateral front raises. This is a great way to get our shoulders exercised in kind of a different way with a little bit more resistance. And what you can actually do if you do these exercises, shoulder exercises back to back is create what's called a superset. Some of you guys that like exercise a lot know about these supersets and it's a great way to get a specific muscle group worked uh, a little bit heavier. So let's jump into some of those lateral raises. Okay, great. So we can use that same apparatus that we just made and again, integrate our shoulders a little bit more with these kind of lateral front raises, right? And again, as we become stronger, we can add more weight and continue to build. That's kind of an easy way to work the front of that shoulder a little bit. All right, great exercise there, getting our shoulders back involved. Now, uh, an exercise you can always do, even with or without equipment on the truck, is a dip. So we're gonna use our tarps here to create a little elevated position and work some, some dips into our exercise routine. So let's jump into those. All right, so here we have a, a tricep dip, pretty simple stuff. Setting that tarp up straight like this allows us to have enough of an inverted position to be able to get low enough to work the triceps pretty easily. So this can be done with a tarp. It can be done with a, a tall concrete wall. There's a lot of different ways to get the uh, dip in and work your tricep. Okay, so 
This one is one of my all time favorites. What we're doing here is a shoulder press, an overhead shoulder press, and we're gonna use our three different tarps to create a drop set. Now, if you've ever done any sort of uh, exercise classes before, you may have heard of this term drop set. It's where you do sequential sets with lower weights to try and continue to burn out, to work yourself to a point of what they call failure. So we're gonna work in our three different tarps, different weights. We're gonna work them and rep them as much as we can and then go to failure. So let's take a look at that. All right, so here we have the overhead shoulder press. Again, we're gonna do it as a drop set. Uh, we're gonna do this, just as an example, we'll do three, five, and then seven. But obviously you could do more reps as you get more comfortable with this. Uh, it can be a little difficult, so you could even start with this and then move on to that and work your way up to this end tarp because we know it's the heaviest. So let's just jump right in. We'll do three, five, and seven. Ugh. Use your knee to get this over your head. Ugh. And once it is, one, two, three. Drop, pick up. One, two, three, four, five. Drop, pick up. And then smoke tarps, pretty simple. Three, four, five, six, seven. So that's our drop set with our overhead shoulder press. Uh, one of the ones where we really get to earn the dirt there. All right, great exercise there. That overhead shoulder press, one of my all time favorites. Now, this next exercise is about getting the legs involved. It's not always easy to do. We're just gonna do a classic front squat, holding our smoke tarp, dropping down and coming back up. You can do this exercise really with any sort of resistance uh, or with no resistance at all and just use body weight. So let's take a look at this front squat. All right, so here we have just a simple front squat. Joe's gonna grab this smoke tarp relatively light for our resistance. We're just gonna hold it in front of our body and do that simple squat motion. Now you can do this without any weight, uh, a smoke tarp, or you can add weight as well. It's just important to try and integrate that lower body into our workout and that front squat is a great way to do that. All right, so there we have the Sunday seven. Those are some of my favorite exercises, but as we can see, there's a lot of different ways to get creative with that equipment that's on the truck. So if you're a flat better and you have some other exercises that you like, please feel free to comment below or reach out to me directly. I always like kind of building up the repertoire. If you are not a flat better, that's okay too. There's a lot of different ways to integrate exercises. You can get yourself some free weights on the truck, a bicycle. It's just important to get active and stay active. Now, hopefully this has been some helpful content for you guys. I really appreciate you coming out for the Sunday seven. Okay, a lot of good information was covered in this episode on how to maintain a healthy lifestyle while driving over the road. From how to have a plan in order to keep our guard up, keep our fires hot and keep that fridge full, from some of the foods to maybe be more considerate with and how we consume them, and then some strategies on how to stay active while we're driving. Now, in the following episode, we're gonna be discussing our drive efficiencies. This is things like fuel economy, route planning, our logs, how to run and how to save. I'm looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Kind of classic dip style, dip, 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 dip. I can't, I don't know. I <sighs>